Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, welcome to this session on testes and spermatic cord. I am Dr. Ravichandran Swami, Professor of Anatomy from Karpagam Faculty of Medical Sciences and Research, Coimbatore. Testes is a very interesting topic. A lot of clinical conditions are associated with the testes. Now, if you look here, fluid can be accumulated around the testes and that we call it as the hydrocyl. The veins which drain the testis can be dilated, that is called the varicocele. Then a small tumorous lesion can appear in the testis. Sometimes the testis can be twisted, that we call it as the, the torsion of the testis. And more interestingly, the testis is an organ which develops intra-abdominally and at later part of the development descends into the scrotum. So during this process, due to some reasons, sometimes the testis may not descend into the scrotum. Now look here, this is a picture which shows the testis present intra-abdominally. This is a course through which the testis descends down. Sometimes the testis may not descend at all and that we call it as the undescended testis. Sometimes the testis may deviate from its normal course of descent and it can be found elsewhere and that we call it as the ectopic testis. Now this is just uh, to briefly introduce you to the topic that I am talking on these uh, clinical aspects. Anyhow, at the later part of my lecture, I will be discussing in more detail about these clinical features. The contents of this uh, lecture, I will be discussing to you on these topics, a brief introduction, spermatic cord, the features of spermatic cord, the dimensions of testis, external features of testis, coverings of the testis, structure of the testis, then the blood supply, nerve supply and lymphatic drainage of the testis. I will also be touching a few aspects of the development of testis. And finally, we will conclude the lecture with uh, clinical anatomy. Now, testis. Here you can see I have put it as T-E-S, T-E-S. Okay, this is the plural form of testis. T-E-S, T-I-S is singular. And if you refer to both the testis, you put it as T-E-S, T-E-S. So, the testis or a pair of male gonads which are suspended into the scrotum by the spermatic cord. It is homologous to the ovaries in females. It is oriented obliquely, slightly obliquely so that the upper end is tilted forwards and the lower end is tilted backwards. And if you also observe, the left testis usually lies at a lower level about 1 centimeter below, below the level of the right testis. The spermatic cord is the one which suspends the testis. The spermatic cord consists of a tubular sheath containing the vas deferens, vessels and nerves of the testis and epididymis. It extends from the deep inguinal ring to the posterior border of the testis. Now look at this picture here. Now this is the uh, testis. Along the posterior border, we have a comma shaped structure that is called as the epididymis. Then this is the spermatic cord by which the testis is suspended into the scrotum. Now this extends through the inguinal canal. This is the deep inguinal ring. This is the superficial inguinal ring and this is the inguinal canal. The spermatic cord passes through the inguinal canal. The length is about 7.5 centimeters. Now, as I told you, the testis develops intra-abdominally. 
During descent of the testes along the inguinal canal, the spermatic cord also comes down. So, while it is coming down, it receives three tubular prolongations from the abdominal wall and that we call it as the coverings of the spermatic cord. Now, you look at this picture here. This is, let us take this as the spermatic cord. These are the three coverings. So, the outermost we have the external spermatic fascia which is formed from the external oblique aponeurosis. Then here we have in the middle the cremastic fascia which is derived from the internal oblique and transverse abdominis and the internal spermatic fascia which is formed from the fascia transversalis. So, these are the three coverings of the spermatic cord. The contents of the spermatic cord are very important. The most important content is the ductus deferens. Apart from the ductus deferens, there are veins and arteries and lymph nodes. The arteries include testicular artery from the abdominal iota, cremastric artery from the inferior epigastric artery and artery to vas deferens which arises from the superior or inferior vesicle artery. And also there is a plexus of veins which drain the testes that is called as the pampiniform plexus of veins. The nerves that are genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve and testicular plexus of sympathetic nerves. Apart from that there is lymph vessels, there are lymph vessels then remains of a embryological structure that is called as the processus vaginalis. So, these are the different contents and it is very important to know all the contents. This can be asked in a short note question during your examinations. Now, we come back to the testes. So, so far we did briefly the spermatic cut. Dimensions of the testes. The length of the testes is about 5 centimeters, the breadth is about 2.5 centimeters and the anteroposterior thickness is about 3 centimeters. In an adult, the testes weighs about 10 to 14 grams. Now, the presenting parts are the external features of the testis. Now, you can see this picture here. This is the ellipsoid shaped or oval shaped testis. This is the epididymis and here you can see the spermatic cord. You just remember the number 2. It has got two ends or poles, two borders and two surfaces. Now, what are the ends or poles? There are two ends, the upper end and the lower end two borders, anterior border and posterior border, two surfaces, medial surface and lateral surface. Now, here this picture I have marked the poles and the borders. This is the upper pole, this is the lower pole. As I already told you, the upper pole will be slightly tilted forwards and the lower pole will be tilted backwards. This is the anterior border and this is the posterior border. Now, we will discuss few things about the poles. The upper pole is smooth and convex and it is tilted anteriorly. To be more specific, it is tilted anterolaterally. It is overlapped by the epididymis. It is overlapped by the epididymis and is connected to it by ductules, small ductules called the efferent ductules. It gives attachment to a sessile fibro fatty body called the appendix of testis. Now, this picture you can see the appendix of testis. This is the anterior border of the testis. This is the posterior border. Now, you can see a small sessile body. This is called as the appendix of testis. What is this appendix of testis? The appendix of testis is the embryonic remnant of a duct called the paramesonephric duct. The paramesonephric duct is otherwise called as the Mullerian duct. In females, it develops into uterus, uterine tubes and cervix. In males, it becomes remnant and that is called as the appendix of the testis. Now, we move on to the uh, lower pole. The lower pole is smooth. The lower pole is smooth and convex. It is tilted posterior medially and is connected to the tail of the epididymis by areolar tissue and tunica vaginalis. 
Now this picture you can see this is the anterior border, the upper pole, the lower pole. This is the covering of the testis, the tunica vaginalis, the lower pole it is related to this tunica vaginalis. Now we move on to the borders, the anterior border and posterior border. The anterior border is smooth and convex. It is covered entirely by tunica vaginalis. The posterior border is here, this is the posterior border here in this picture. The posterior border is broad and flat and it is also straight. It is partially covered by tunica vaginalis. On the posterolateral aspect, we have a structure that is the epididymis and the posteromedial aspect, we have the vas deferens. Now we move on to the surfaces. There are two surfaces, medial and lateral surface. The medial and lateral surfaces both are smooth and convex. The lateral surface is overlapped posteriorly by the epididymis and is separated from the testis by a small slit like gap that is called as the sinus of the epididymis. The sinus of epididymis is a semilunar recess of the vaginal sac and the sinus of epididymis helps in side identification of the testis. Now epididymis, what is epididymis? It is a comma shaped body located along the lateral part of the posterior border of the testis. It overlaps the lateral surface and it consists of three parts, the head, body and tail. Now we so far did the external features of testis. There are two poles, two borders and two surfaces. The poles are upper pole and lower pole. The borders are anterior border and posterior border and the surfaces are medial surface and lateral surface. Now we move on to the next part of the lecture, the coverings of the testis. Now there are three intrinsic, you can see this picture here, there are three intrinsic coverings from outside inwards, they are tunica vaginalis, tunica albuginea and tunica vasculosa. So these are the three coverings. The tunica vaginalis is the outermost covering. It covers all around the testis except along the posterior border. So this is the anterior border of the testis here. You please observe this picture. This is the section of the testis showing the interior also. Now this is the anterior border. This is the posterior border and here you see the epididymis and this is the covering, the outermost covering that is the tunica vaginalis. Now next to that you see a fibrous tissue covering that is the tunica albuginea and the innermost covering which covers the, the lobules they are, that is called as the tunica vasculosa. Now I am going to discuss about the tunica vaginalis. It covers all around the testis except along the posterior border and it has got two layers, an outer layer that is called as the parietal layer and an inner layer that is called as the visceral layer. In between these two layers, there is a cavity. Tunica vaginalis is the lower persistent portion of the processus vaginalis. Now, uh, I told you in the beginning that the testis develops in the abdomen. So the testis develops retroperitoneally in the dorsal abdominal wall. Now you can see the picture here. So this is the peritoneal cavity here and you see this is the testis and the first initially it develops inside the abdomen. Later it descends down into the scrotum. Now the processus vaginalis is an extension of the peritoneal cavity that precedes the descent of testis. Once the testis has come down, this closes here or this becomes obliterated and that one is forming the tunica vaginalis. The tunica albuginea is a dense white fibrous coat covering the testis all around. It is covered all around by 
tunica vaginalis except in the posterior part. The vessels and nerves of the testis usually enter in the posterior aspect. Posteriorly, the tunica albuginea is thickened to form an incomplete vertical septum called the mediastinum testis. Now, this is the incomplete vertical septum called the mediastinum testis. The innermost layer is the tunica vasculosa. It is an areolar and vascular membrane. It lines the individual lobules of the testis. So, these are the individual lobules and these are lined by an areolar and vascular membrane that we call it as the tunica vasculosa. Now, these three coverings which I just discussed now, they are called as the intrinsic coverings. Apart from that, there are extrinsic coverings also. These are contributed by the layers of scrotum, the skin, datos muscle, external spermatic fascia, cremastic muscle and fascia, internal spermatic fascia and the parietal layer of tunica vaginalis also is included under the extrinsic coverings. Now, we move on to the next topic, the structure of testis. Now, this is a key picture which I want you to draw for the describing the coverings as well as the structure. Now, the glandular part of the testis, so this is the glandular part of the testis, it consists of about 200 to 300 lobules. Each lobule will contain 2 to 3 highly coiled seminiferous tubules and each tube tubule measures about 60 centimeter in length and about 0.2 millimeters in diameter. These seminiferous tubules you can see here, these seminiferous tubules join together at the apex of each lobule to form 20 to 30 straight tubules. These straight tubules enter the mediastinum testis and anastomose with each other to form a network called the rete testis. The efferent ductules arising from the rete, they enter into the head of the epididymis. The efferent ductules, they end in a single duct which is coiled on itself to form the body and tail of the epididymis. So, this is the structure of the testis. Now, we move on to the, the blood supply. The blood supply, we have to know the arterial supply and also the venous drainage of the testis. The arterial supply of testis is mainly by the testicular artery. Now, this picture you can see this is the testicular artery. The testicular artery arises from abdominal iota at the level of L2. It descends on the posterior abdominal wall, reaches the deep inguinal ring, then it enters the spermatic cord, then reaches the posterior border of testis, then it divides into branches. The small branches, they enter into the posterior border. The larger branches, medial and lateral, they pierce the tunica albiginea and run on the surfaces and finally, they ramify in the tunica vasculosa. The venous drainage of testis, 15 to 20 veins appear from the posterior border of testis and epididymis. Now, you can see the veins appearing here. All these, they unite to form the pampiniform plexus. The word pampiniform is referring to wine, V-I-N-E, it is not W-I-N-E. V-I-N-E refers to a climber plant. It is like a climber plant, so it is referred to as the pampiniform plexus because of its appearance. The anterior part of the plexus lies around the testicular artery, the middle part lies around the ductus difference and the posterior part lies isolated. At the superficial ring, this plexus of veins, they unite to form four veins. Now, and they travel through the canal and at the level of the deep inguinal ring, they further join to form 
two veins. Finally, a single vein is formed which drains into the inferior vena cava on the right side and into the left renal vein on the left side. Now, here you can see the, the veins arising out of the posterior border, they are forming the uh, pamphiform flexes. As they travel through, they form first four veins, then they condense to two, and finally, one on the right side opens directly into the IVC and the left side it is opening into the left renal vein. Venous drainage of testis, what is its importance? The heat conveyed by the arteries of testis is absorbed back by the veins of the pampiniform plexus. Ultimately, the scrotal temperature of the testis is slightly lower than the temperature inside the abdomen by about 3 to 4 degrees and this mechanism of heat transfer is called counter current heat exchange mechanism. The lymphatic drainage is predominantly by pre and para aortic lymph nodes. The nerve supply is by predominantly supplied by the sympathetic nerves from renal and aortic plexuses. Preganglionic fibers are derived from T10 and T11 segments of spinal cord. Please note that the T10 segment is common for the region around umbilicus and sympathetic supply of testis. Therefore, sometimes the testicular pain is referred to the umbilical region. Now, I am just going to briefly discuss the development of testis. The testis develops in relation to the developing mesonephros at the level of segments T10 to T12 in the posterior abdominal wall behind the peritoneum. The development starts by fifth week and is apparent in the seventh week of intrauterine life. Each testis is developed from the medulla of the undifferentiated genital ridge. The genital ridge is formed by the proliferation of silomic epithelium covering the medial surface of the mesonephric ridge. Now, you can see here in this picture, this is the urogenital ridge which has got differentiated into a medial genital ridge and lateral nephrogenic ridge. In relation to the nephrogenic ridge, we have the development of the mesonephric duct and the paramesonephric duct and this is the yolk sac. The germinal epithelium here proliferates to form sex cords and primordial germ cells migrate from yolk sac to the region of genital ridge. These are the primordial germ cells which are migrating. Now, what are these primordial germ cells? The cells of ovaries and testis from which germ cells are formed are segregated early in the life of the embryo. They are formed in the wall of the yolk sac. During development of gonads, they migrate to the region of the developing gonads and primordial germ cells, they have an inducing effect on the development of the gonads. Now, the sex cords start enlarging and they reach deep into the gonad and are now called medullary cords. The primitive sex cells which are coming into this region, they are incorporated within these cords. So, this is the developing area of the testis. The testis develops in close proximity to the mesonephros and the mesonephric duct. Most of the mesonephric tubules, they degenerate. Some of these that lie near the testis persist and along with the mesonephric duct forms the duct system. Now, we can see here this is the mesonephric duct. This is the, these are the mesonephric tubules. This is the developing testis where the sex cords, uh, they have enlarged and they have, they are, uh, the primordial germ cells have come in and the seminiferous tubules are formed. The ends of seminiferous tubules anastomose with one another to form the retate testis. Retate testis in turn establishes contact with persisting mesonephric tubules which forms the vasa efferentia. 
cranial part of the mesonephric duct becomes highly coiled on itself and forms the epididymis. So, this is how the final, finally the testis is developed and the different parts of the testis you can see here. The descent of the testis, I told you the testis is developing inside the abdomen. The testis develop in relation to the lumbar region of the posterior abdominal wall. During fetal life, they gradually descend to the scrotum. So, this is the timeline by the third month it reaches the iliac fossa, by seventh month it reaches the deep inguinal ring, by the end of the seventh month it passes through the inguinal canal, almost by eighth month it enters into the scrotum. Now this picture shows the gradual descent of the testis, first it is in the abdominal cavity and passes through the inguinal canal and finally reaches the scrotum. Now, what are the causes of descent? The exact causes of descent is not clearly known, but few causes have been attributed to it. Number one processes vaginalis, then hormones, the male sex hormones, then differential growth of the body wall, intra-abdominal temperature and intra-abdominal pressure. The processes vaginalis is an extension of peritoneal cavity that precedes the descent of testis into the scrotum. Following the descent, the processes closes above the testis. Now, we have another factor leading to the descent that is called the gubernaculum testis. The gubernaculum testis is a band of loose tissue extending from the lower pole of testis to the scrotum. Proximally, it is attached to the lower pole of testis, peritoneum in front of the testis and mesonephric ducts. Distally, it splits into a number of fibrous threads called the tail of Lockwood. Now, it is sometimes referred to as the guiding force of descent. Traction of gubernaculum widens the inguinal canal for the easy passage of the testis through the canal. After descent, it becomes rudimentary and called as the scrotal ligament. Interestingly, elephants, they do not have, they have testis intra-abdominally, they do not have gubernaculum. So, this is the reason attributed why the testis of the elephants are present intra-abdominally. Now, this is just to show diagrammatically the descent. This is the peritoneal cavity. Now, this is the testis. This is the processus vaginalis. And this is the tissue, the gubernaculum. Now, we move on to the last part of the lecture, the clinical aspects. Hydrocele. What is hydrocele? It is accumulation of serous fluid in the sheath covering the testis, particularly the tunica vaginalis. Now, here this picture, this is the testicle, the tunica vaginalis. You have a sac inside, the vaginal sac fluid gets accumulated here that we call it as the hydrocele. The types of hydrocele, there are primary hydrocels, secondary hydrocels, infantile, congenital and ancestor. The secondary hydrocels are caused due to trauma, infection or tumors. Infantile, the tunica and processus vaginalis is distended up to the deep inguinal ring, but it is closed at the deep ring so that there is no connection with the peritoneal cavity. In congenital type, the entire processus vaginalis is patent. So, there is a communication with the peritoneal cavity and in ancestor, only the middle part of the processus vaginalis is patent. Now, this is just to make you understand. So, this is the peritoneal cavity. This is the processus vaginalis. This, is, this one is closed after the testis gets descended. So, sometimes it may remain patent and fluid gets collected in that and that forms the different types of the uh, hydrocele, particularly the congenital, infantile and encysted varieties. This excess fluid from tunica vaginalis can be aspirated by passing a needle. When you pass a needle here, 
the layers which you are penetrating you should be aware. So, these are the different layers skin, dartos muscle of scrotum, the external spermatic fascia, primastric fascia, internal spermatic fascia, parietal layer of tunica vaginalis, then you will enter into the vaginal sac. Varicocele. Varicoceles are produced by dilatation of the veins draining the testis, particularly the pampiniform plexus of veins. Varicoceles are more common on the left side for the following reasons. The left testicular vein is longer. Left testicular vein enters the left renal vein at a right angle. Descending colon distended with feces may compress the left testicular vein. Nutcracker effect of compression of left, left renal vein may occur between the superior mesenteric artery and abdominal iota. Undescended testis, it is also called cryptorchidism. The testis may lie in the lumbar, iliac, inguinal or upper scrotal region. Undescended testis, in these cases the descent may be completed after birth. Spermatogenesis may fail to occur in an undescended testis and the chances of malignancy tumors are very high in case of undescended testis. Ectopic testis, testis occupies an abnormal position due to deviation from the normal route of descent. So, the common sites of this abnormal position can be lower part of abdomen, over the skin of the penis, behind the scrotum front of thigh or in the perineal region. Testicular tumors, the incidence of testicular tumors is about 7 per 100,000, commonly affects the age group between 15 to 40 years. The 95 percent of tumors arise from germ cells, we classify them into germ cell tumors and non-germ cell tumors. Under the germ cell tumors, we have the seminomas and non-seminomatous tumors which are further subdivided into teratomas and yolk sac tumors. The non-germ cell tumors are Sertali cell tumors or Leydig cell tumors. Hermaphroditism. An individual shows some features of a male and some of a female. True hermaphrodite, in this case both testis and ovary are present. In case of pseudo hermaphrodites, the gonad is of one sex and the internal or external genitalia is of the opposite sex. Anomalies of descent, anarchism, monarchism, partially descended testis. In case of anarchism, both testis are retained in the abdomen and the individual is sterile. Both testis are retained. Primary defect lies in the testis and it may undergo malignant changes. Monarchism is a condition in which one testis is intra-abdominal and other lies in normal position. Sometimes the testis may be partially descended and ectopia testis I have already discussed. Testicular torsion occurs when the spermatic cord from which the testis is suspended twists and cuts off the blood supply to the testis. Position of the affected testicle will be slightly higher or the testicle might disappear from the scrotum. The treatment is to gently untwist or unwind the spermatic cord. The symptoms associated may be rapid onset of severe pain in the testis. The condition may be associated with fever and vomiting. Now we are in the end of the almost near the end of the topic. In summary, what did we learn today? We had a brief introduction on the clinical aspects of the testis. Then we discussed the features of spermatic cord, its coverings, the dimensions of testis, the external features of testis, coverings and the structure of the testis. Then we discuss the blood supply, nerve supply and lymphatic drainage and its importance. 
then we discussed a few things about the development of testes and the descent of testes and finally we completed with clinical anatomy and that brings us to the end of the topic thank you